Hey guys, it's Irene here and I'm finally back making YouTube videos. I'm so sorry I was away for two months but I'm back and we're gonna start it off with a Photoshop tutorial. I recently was playing more with gradient maps and I wanted to achieve this kind of turquoisey almost highlight look. I saw it a lot of in on Instagram and I think it looked very very cool. It's very very easy to do and I'm gonna show you guys how I do it right now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just open my picture and I'm opening it in camera raw because I shot my picture in raw and I definitely would recommend you guys shooting your pictures in raw instead of JPEG because you have a lot more control over the editing um, but if you have the picture that you want to add it and it's not in RAW, it's in JPEG, you can still open it in this plugin. All you have to do is just go to File, Open As, choose whatever JPEG picture you have, like I have, let's say this one here, and when you have Open As, you're just going to choose Camera RAW and just press Open. And as you can see, it opens the picture and the camera raw. All right, we're not gonna do anything with this picture because as you can see, it's already been edited quite a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and open my picture again. And all I like to do here, and by the way, this plugin is very, very similar to Lightroom. So all I like to do here is bring up my shadows a little bit, um, make it a little bit more sharp and reduce the noise and make it a little bit easier for me to add it. Uh, going back here I'm gonna play with the white balance, I'm gonna lower the pinkness and make it a little bit more blue, just like that. Actually maybe a little bit more shadows need to be lightened up and maybe just a little bit more in exposure, just like that. Okay, I think that looks great and we're just gonna open the image. You can definitely play a lot more in your camera raw, but we're gonna do a lot in Photoshop, so I think that's good enough. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and clear the skin. I'm gonna probably just skip this step and show you guys just the finished result. And if you would like a separate tutorial on skin, just let me know. All right. Alright, so I just finished editing the skin and now I'm gonna liquefy the hair to make it a little bit bigger. It's not something that maybe everyone will do, but I love doing it because I think it adds a lot more to the picture. And I'm gonna go ahead, duplicate my layer. You guys know how to do it. You just right click on your background, choose duplicate layer and press OK. Then we're gonna go to filter, liquefy, and duplicating the layer is very, very important. Uh, in case you mess something up, you want to be able to go back to your picture. And I'm going to freeze the face with the freeze mask tool, which is just right over here, to make sure that I don't mess up her face. And whenever the red is, this is the area where you won't be able to move it. I'm just going to freeze the ear also, and right over here. Perfect. Now we're going to choose the forward warp tool and I'm going to do my brush size at 500. It, the brush size is going to depend on your picture resolution and how big the portrait is but I usually like to choose it at like around half of her, her face and now we're just going to pull the hair up and to the sides to make it a little bit curlier and just more voluminous and big. Okay, I think that's good enough. I'm just gonna press OK. So this is what it did. This is before and after. And now we're just gonna fix a little few things here that we messed up by liquefying her hair. We're just gonna choose the eraser tool gonna make it a little bit bigger and I'm just gonna go and erase anything that looks kind of weird now that we've liquefied the hair. Just make sure you don't touch the hair because you're gonna mess everything that you did. Do it only around the hair. 
ta-da! This is before and after on the hair. I think it looks way better, but you know, it's up to your own preference and taste. I'm gonna merge those layers down and yes, I don't like keeping a lot of layers up, but if you do then do so. I'm just showing the way I personally add it and that's the way I like to do it. Alright, so now the fun part and we're gonna create the different colors with gradient maps. So all we're gonna do is choose this icon right here and choose gradient map. And now we're just gonna double click on this gradient right here and it's gonna take us to the gradient editor. Now if you've never played with gradient maps you will have only the two first rows up. Uh, these are all of the gradients that I created and to create a gradient you're just gonna choose whatever existing gradient you already have. Your color to the left will be your shadows and the color to the right will be your highlights. So to choose the color you're just gonna double click on this little square right here. So double click on it and we're gonna choose it a little bit warmer. Maybe like so. And I'm just gonna choose OK and then here same thing you're just gonna double click on it and we're gonna just choose the turquoise kind of color maybe like that and I'm just gonna press OK and then to create your gradient all you're gonna do is just press new so yeah these are the different gradients that I was creating for this particular look and um, actually I think I'm gonna go with this one I like it a little bit better so the lighter your gradient is the lighter the picture is going to come out just in general so choose your colors pretty light and almost pastel like for this particular editing that I'm going to show you guys and then you're just going to press OK now I know this looks kind of crazy right now but we're going to just choose instead of normal on our layer we're going to do multiply and this is what it's going to look like now yeah it's already starting to look how we want it to. So again, I'm just going to merge those layers down and now I'm going to play with colors. So I'm going to choose selective color and we're going to go to cyan's, make that a little bit more green and blue just to give it a little bit more vibrance. And now we're going to go to curves. I'm going to bring the shadows up just a little bit and we also will make it just a little bit more contrasting so we're going to create a curve like that so here bring it down and in the middle bring it up so that just made it a little bit more contrasting like that maybe it's a little bit too much actually and if it is just bring your opacity down to whatever you feel like looks the best all right and also actually i'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit more vibrant so an image adjustments oops keep it back on the background layer image adjustments vibrance we're gonna bring it up just a bit maybe like that all right that looks great I'm gonna merge all of my layers together and now I'm just gonna highlight and shadow I showed you guys how to do this so many times so again I'm just gonna skip this step and if you guys never seen my highlight and shadow routine I will link the tutorials in the description bar or somewhere on the screen so you'll be able to watch those tutorials separately but yeah I'm just gonna skip it and show you guys the final result Alright, so I'm done with my highlighting and shadowing and I'm going to show you guys what the before and after looks like. So this is before and after. It's pretty dramatic and this is why I love doing it. And again, if you guys would like to see a tutorial, link will be down below. So the last thing you can do is just to sharpen it up a bit and you're going to go to filter, sharpen, unsharpen mask and I always keep my radius at 1. And you can just go ahead and probably put it to about a hundred. If you don't like your pictures too sharp, don't do it this high, but I like them to look pretty sharp. I'm going to press OK. And also another thing that I like to do sometimes is go to exposure and offset the picture just a little bit. Just like that. It creates almost like a foggy effect and I really like the way it looks. Makes it look 
makes it look more like mysterious kind of so yeah this is pretty much it and I hope you guys like this tutorial don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet leave me a comment down below suggesting what else I should do next and I'll see you guys in my next video bye